Josie and Olivia Gross here. Today's children's book reading is A Million Fish, More or Less, by Patricia C. McKissack and illustrated by Dana Schutzer. It was early morning on the Bayou Clapital. Hugh Thomas had just tossed his line into the water when Papa Daddy and Elder Abaddon came rowing out of the Gauzy River fog. They were swapping bayou tails just like they had for years. Morning to you, who Thomas called as they pulled up alongside the bank. Papa Daddy started right in. The elder and me were just saying that the Bayou Clapperton is a mighty peculiar place. Take the time back in 03. Me and the elder here caught a wild turkey weighed 500 pounds. Hugh Thomas' eyes filled with wonder. That's a powerful big turkey. Quickly, Elder Abidjan took up the story, adding, As we was marching that gobbler home, I spied a lantern that been left by Spanish conquistadors back in the year 1542, and it was still burning after 350 years. Hugh Thomas exclaimed in amazement. Papa Daddy lowered his voice to a whisper. Just when the elder picked up the lantern, the ground commenced to cracken, and the longest, meanest cottonmouth I ever did see raised up. The thing had legs and went to chasing us. The hounds broke in the run. I got tangled up in the ropes, and that turkey got clean away. With a quick nod, he gave the story back to Elder Abidjan. About that time, a swarm of giant mosquitoes attacked. I lost my footing and dropped the lantern in a pool of quicksand. Might near fell of myself. Course, as you can see, I didn't then, cause I'm here now. Hugh Thomas studied on what the two old swampers had told him. Then he smiled. Y'all are just funning, right? Did that turkey really weigh 500 pounds? More or less, Papa Daddy answered, snapping his suspenders and winking his eye. And was that lantern really over 350 years old? Give or take a year or two, Elder Abidjan answered, sweating a mosquito. Was it really still burning? Well, let's just say it was flickering a bit. And with their tail all told, the two men rode away. Remember, Papa Daddy called just before they disappeared behind the curtain of fog. Strange things do happen on the Bayou Capital. Now Hugh Thomas was alone with only worrisome mosquitoes to keep him company. But it wasn't long before he caught three small fish. And in the next half hour, he got a million more. Big ones, little ones, all sizes. The boy was so excited, he whooped with joy. Wait to Papa Daddy and Elder Abidjan see this. Then loading his magnificent catch on his wagon, he turned to leave. But without warning, two yellow eyes surfaced just above the waterline. Hugh Thomas knew it was Atu, the grand pure of all the alligators on Jackson's pointy. The old gator slithered onto the bank, blocking the boy's way. Where do you think you would go with all your fish? He hissed angrily. Hugh Thomas blinked. Why, that gator was talking right out. The th these are my fish, the boy answered with uncertain spirit. Atu's mean eyes took in the catch. And what's for me and mine to eat if I let you take them all? Hugh Thomas considered making a run for it, but the old gator must have read his mind. Don't even think of it, he warned, inching closer. Then he chuckled softly. Your best chance is to figure on this. If 100 alligators and 100 feet long can move at 100 yards per second, how long would it take us to get from this water to you and your wagon of fish? Answer now. He hissed, moving still closer. Not long enough for me to get away, Hugh Thomas thought. 
deciding that anything was better than tangling with Atu and all his kin. He solved the riddle by throwing a goodly amount of fish back into the bayou. You made the right answer, Atu said. Then he turned and disappeared beneath the dark waters along with the hundred other alligators who had been watching and waiting. Hugh Thomas took a quick count and saw he still had close to half a million fish left. He followed the swamp path that was the quickest way to Papa Daddy and Elder Abidjan's houseboat. Story had it that Jean Paulet's pirate treasure was hidden somewhere amongst the cypress leaves, but Hugh Thomas wasn't interested. I've got my own treasure, he boasted. The air grew thick, hovering over the swamp like a big smothering hand. Then there still came a terrible kind of silence with its own sound. The boy hummed and quickened his step. Something was stalking him, closing in fast. The ghost of Jean Paulet, maybe? No, Hugh Thomas was suddenly surrounded by an army of raccoons, led by the most notorious rogue of them all, Mosley. <laughs> Bye! Leave, shouted the bandit leader. We'll be the men in a door, little sir. And your wagon of fish, dear, will do nicely. Wait, Hugh Thomas cried out. That's not fair. Not fair, says he, Mosley scoffed. And what will be fair to you? Half maybe. Hugh Thomas couldn't believe he was bargaining with a band of pirate raccoons. <laughs> Why sail on a hair, mate, when we can take it all? Thinking fast, Hugh Thomas suggested a contest. That's it. We'll have a contest of some kind. Mosley laughed coarsely. <laughs> a contest it'll be. You win, we take half the catch. I win, we take it all. Mind you, that's as fair as it'll be getting. The boy agreed, not knowing what to expect. Swords? Pistols? Wrestling? <whistles> then, to his astonishment, Mosley whistled and two black bears appeared. Reaching beneath a huge swamp cabbage, the pirate pulled out a twenty-foot snake. We'll skip rope, says I. And so the contest began. The bears turned and Mosley jumped. Hugh Thomas hadn't seen such fancy footwork in all his life. That rascal skipped so hard and so fast he was down in a pit. When he finally missed on jump 5,552, his motley crew sent up a loud cheer. But Hugh Thomas held his own. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 4,050. Hugh Thomas jumped and jumped, 5,000. He was so tired, his legs hurt, but he jumped some more, 5,550. He managed just three more jumps before missing, but it was enough to win, 5,553. Mosley was purely outdone. He went to grumbling and mumbling and swearing under his breath, but in the end, he made good his word. I takes me licking, and now I be taking me fish. One by one, hundreds of masked bandits marched past the wagon and plucked a juicy treat. Then Mosley found the plumpest fish for himself and beckoned Hugh Thomas to hurry along. Even though his catch was cut by half again, Hugh Thomas still felt like a winner. Moving with purpose, he passed the large cypress stump called Napoleon's Elbow, then quit the swamp. Winding his way through the deserted grounds of the Moslem mansion, he held with tradition and threw part of his catch to the water fowl that lived in the old garden pool. Since slavery times, fishermen believed that feeding these birds would bring them luck the next time out. Thief! Thief! A fish crow spied Hugh Thomas's catch and sent up a signal. Birds darkened the sky. They swooped down. 
speared their fish and soared away, screeching, Thief! Thief! Shoo! shouted Hugh Thomas. But the birds chased him across the parish road and under the trestle, stopping just short of the first house in Free Jack's quarters. Chantilly, the neighbor girl's cat, was sunning on the porch steps. Her gray eyes were fixed on the wagon full of plump fish. Meow! Why? It's a Christmas gift! The cat shouted, excitement swelling her words. To see you, that is, she added in a soft purr. Hugh Thomas was surprised that the cat was talking, and to him. Most of the time, Chantilly wouldn't even look in his direction. It's not my custom to report on my mistress's whereabouts, but if you want to see Miss Charlie Pearl, she's with Walter Edward, out back in the okra patch. Can't you hear them laughing together? Without thinking, Hugh Thomas hopped the fence and disappeared around the house. Sometime later, he came back with his friend in tow. He was talking all excited and explaining. Come see for yourself. It was a million fish. Shally Pearl stopped. What million? I see three little fish. Hugh Thomas was completely confused. Then he looked at Chantilly and understood. You tricked me, he accused her. You ate my fish. Say you did. The cat blinked innocently and cleaned her whiskers. Shally Pearl scooped up her pet. You must be Adler, Hugh Thomas. Come tellin' that whopper, then lie and blame on my poor precious kitty cat. And she marched away in a huff. Meanwhile, a chorus of Chantilly's friends meowed contently as they licked their paws. With only the three fish left, Hugh Thomas followed the path to the backwater slope where Papa Daddy and Elder Abadron's houseboat was tied up. They were sitting on the front porch playing checkers. Seems the bayou let you come way with a fun catch this morning, Elder Abijan said, smiling. Best luck a fisherman can have is to catch just enough for dinner, Papa Daddy put in. But I caught a million more, the boy boasted. What happened to him is a long story. Papa Daddy pulled his straw hat down over his eyes. Elder Abijan leaned back in the old cane chair. So you've learned that the Bayou Clapito is a mighty strange place. Tell us, now, was it really a million? A smile broke across Hugh Thomas's face, and he winked his eye. More or less, he answered, and started right in on his tail. The end. Thank you for listening, and next Tuesday I'll be reading Whoever You Are by Mem Fox and illustrated by Leslie Staub. Have a great day, and see you next week!